Good morning, Doug here from the Hundredfold Journey. Thanks again for joining us on this Sundays with Doug as we come alongside of you, as you embark on your journey, where we're here to rewire your brain, build new habits, and create a new identity. Because a hundredfold is about a group of people who are looking to find their true identity, and by doing so, finding God's true identity, because you do have the power to choose. So thanks for joining us here on this Sundays with Doug, as we actually go into a very specific teaching about rewiring your brain. So uh, again, thanks for thanks for joining. I'm going to come up here and hide the meeting. There we go. So um, as we <clears throat> as we do each week, uh, I'd like to hear from those that are online about uh, the ten truths because this is part of rewiring our brain is understanding who we are from an identity standpoint. And these truths were true for Jesus. So therefore they're true for us because Jesus was always in the right place at the right time. All of his needs were constantly net, met. And um, so as we incorporate these into our lives through memorizing, applying and meditating upon them, I'd like to hear from those that are online, maybe an experience that they had this week where this these truths uh, came into play. So um, yeah, who would like to share? Um, I, I will. <laughs> uh, so this last week I um, was looking to get into um, an appointment, but when I looked online, it looked like there was no possible way that I could get in. And uh, I was really kind of not sure that I really wanted to continue doing what I was doing. And so I think that I was vibrating a little bit of negativity there. Um, and so then I changed my mind. <laughs> so when I changed my thoughts and my mind, mm -hmm. I started to uh, become neutral. And I thought, well, um, God has granted me favor in the sight of those around me, and I'm always in the right place at the right time. So the day before I needed to get in to um, get into this appointment, there was no appointments open. And so I went back online in the morning and I thought, um, well, I'll just check again. And sure enough, there was an appointment open. And so I was like, I was at the right place at the right time. And um, God had granted me favor. And, um, and I was just having an attitude of just being gratitude that, oh, yeah. you know, if it, I was just neutral about it, mm -hmm. I wasn't negating it or, or looking for an outcome, I just kind of stayed neutral about mm -hmm. it. And so um the universe would just open that window of opportunity for me. So I, it was like, this is great. You know, I was excited that I was able to get in. So, and um, yeah, so I think that that I was, I was at the right place at the right time and God had granted me favor. Yeah, that that's fantastic. And <clears throat> thank you for sharing that and having the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the mind of Christ where, the thought that came in, which was, hey, why don't I just check this morning? And and sure enough, there was that uh, that opportunity. Now, the, the difference, and I'd like to point this out, I'm just going to take the contrast, the difference between what happened, your outcome, and what could have happened. What could have happened, and I was here a long time ago, was, you know, getting upset and angry. It's like, man, I thought I was doing all the right things, you know, God, you know, why isn't this happening? And you're, you know, maybe I'm not doing this right. Maybe, maybe God doesn't love me. I, I don't know any, any of those. And what ends up happening is those thoughts take you down a path where you can't hear the thought of, Hey, why don't you go check this morning again? Because why would you, if you were angry or anxious or this never works out for me, you wouldn't have that thought. So the fact that you stayed neutral allowed you to hear that voice that said, hey, go check it out. And then sure enough, it it revealed itself to you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? 
Yeah. And yeah. and I think I was still um I was neutral, but I was hopeful. Yeah, right. And and I think that, you know, that was which I was really surprised because it's really difficult to get into this place. And so I was like, oh, that's that's wonderful. I felt blessed. Absolutely. So now you have a knowing. And this is what's cool about when you have things like that occur, you now have a knowing that this does work. It's not just a faith, oh, I hope it does or whatever. Now you see it actually happen for you. And now you can build upon that. And your your knower, your knowing will grow um, just like, like an airplane. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, how does this airplane fly? I, I, I don't know. I'm just trusting it does. And then you get on the plane and and it happens maybe the first time that you know you're nervous you're excited and then after that there's a knowing where you don't even think about it doesn't even doesn't even phase you you just get on the plane and before you know it you're on the other side of the country so there's a knowing there's a rest that comes because you know it's just going to happen mm -hmm. yeah. well thanks for sharing all mm -hmm. right so let's uh so again we are in a series called we have the mind of christ and what does that really look like? And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, what we have to realize is that your mind is a garden. Your thoughts are the seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. And we get to choose. Sometimes we don't think we have a choice, but we do. And it depends on what seeds we want to sow. And this actually goes into what a hundredfold is all about. It's about Mark chapter four, the seed and the sower. You know, the 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 farmer goes out and he seeds. Uh, he throws his seeds out. Then he goes to bed at night and he wakes up and there's a crop. There's a harvest. Some thirty, some sixty, some a hundredfold. And what we're about is a hundredfold. What does a hundredfold uh, crop look like? It's certainly not weeds, right? So mm -hmm. we're here to try to to pull those weeds out because that's stinky thinking. And then this one, the heaviest burdens that we carry are the thoughts in our head. I think that picture speaks a thousand words. We're trying to drag this sucker around. <laughs> and that's that's the burden that uh, that we carry. So we have to lighten that load change our thoughts, change our mind. And we have the ability <clears throat> the ability to do that. So just how powerful is our mind? Uh, and this is how God has designed us to be uh, co-creator. Uh, we've talked about this before. Uh, so I'm just, this is kind of a review, but just how powerful our thoughts are is we have the ability for the placebo effect where basically you are taking a supposed drug uh, for treatment and it might be a sugar pill, but the doctor says, this is the pill you take. You're going to get healthy because of this and um, you'll get better. And studies show that even though they took a sugar pill, they have the same results as someone who takes an actual pill. So that's how powerful your mind is, is is the placebo effect really shows that. Mm. Um, so what we need to do is it's time for a software upgrade. So think of yourself, oops, uh, think of yourself as uh, like a computer, a laptop computer, and there are updates that occur every so often. And especially when you first buy a computer, not sure if you guys have had experience with that, but you buy a brand new computer, you set it up, and then all of a sudden you got to sit there and wait because there's a software upgrade. Because when it was manufactured, there are some changes that that uh, that took place. So now you've got the latest uh, software. So that's what we need to do all the time is to have that upgrade where we change our thoughts and change our minds. And this is one thing that uh, the Bible is very clear on. Uh, Romans says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good 
acceptable and perfect. And this actually ties in to what you shared earlier about um, so that you may prove what the will of God is. And sometimes you think of that as, well, what is the will of God? The will of God is just being available and it's being um, neutral so that when that 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 uh, guidance uh, is is sent, you're you're in a state of mind where you can receive it and respond. Right. And we do that by the renewing of our mind, being transformed. Um, so that's uh, the Bible is very clear. But uh, but how what what transformation needs to occur, and what what is the renewal that's required? So um, so I am to present or offer my will to God, renew my mind, um, and basically live from the unseen, not the seen of this world. Excuse me. That's a big one because our five physical senses uh, scream and yell at us all the time, and it, it's telling us what we think, uh, what we should think about what we're seeing. And in your case, uh, going back to you know that that appointment, you know your five physical senses you know saw that and says you know it's not even possible. Uh, so why even try? But when we live from the unseen, things open up for us. So then when, when we do that, I'm able to see God's will, which is everything good, well, pleasing, and complete. And I don't know about you, but I would prefer to live where everything is well, everything is pleasing, and everything is, is complete perfection. And yes, that is possible. Now, uh, what, does, uh, what does it mean to... For, for your will where you set it aside and there's a uh, there's a greek word uh, and i'm getting a little technical here uh histemi, to cause or make to stand to place set to stand or to stand or be near so basically when you present yourself so histemi is the word for for present when we do that what we're doing is we're 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 standing next to we we are putting our putting in place the body, which is your will. And your will says, you know, I want to get angry. I want to get upset. Um, but instead you set it aside, right? It, it's as if you're looking at it from a different perspective. And this is what Jesus demonstrated for us, where he said, Father, if you're willing, take this cup, yet not my will, but yours be done. So I think I think what we tend to do is, is we... We get into that five physical senses and we think that's all there is. We live out of the scene and what we see and we see, you know, people that are against us or even even just the world and what what we're going through now. And there's fear and doubt, uh, discouragement, uh, anxiety that that comes from that. And what this is suggesting is we set aside those emotions, though that fear, and instead we go inward and we say, I know that who I am and my identity, and it's not my will. My will would be anxious and being worried, but your will be done. And then transformed, the word here is metamorphosis. And what that definition is, is a great change in appearance or character. So when we renew our mind, um, and the word that's used there was transformed, and the key, the, the Greek word is metamorphosis, um, is that you just become a new creation. Uh, the process of great and, and usually rather sudden change in the form of habits of some animals during transformation. And the, the, the illustration there is the caterpillar that turns into a butterfly. Right. It's no longer who it was before. It's a brand new creation. So rather than crawling on the, the ground, it's now a beautiful butterfly and can fly above the ground. And that's called metamorphosis. And that's what happens when we renew our mind. We become a new creation. We're no longer what we were yesterday and, and the day before. We're being transformed. We're being, uh, our appearance and our character 
is changing with each of those decisions of the will, right? Where we set aside what we think is right. And instead we align ourselves up with, um, with the way God thinks about us and, and his thoughts towards us. Am I making some sense? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good. And then uh, the last one here is, is just renew. And I, I, I can't even pronounce that. Anna Kanos. <laughs> so <laughs> Anna, it's a two, two words for renew, right? And in this case, it's Anna Kanos. So Anna is a, is a preposition denotes upwards. So it's the direction that we're going. Um, and then Kanos is uh, as a new quality. It's innovation. It's free. It's fresh. It's new. So what we're doing is we're renewing in an upward direction, right? So, um, and then because it's not found exactly like this before. So again, uh, Corinthians says, you know, uh, that we've become a new creation. The old is past, behold, new has come. So we are literally a new person. So because of the decision that you made about the line, you are now no longer that that person. You now have a new knowing, a new belief that says, hey, this, uh, this works. And um, uh, I am loved. I am supported. I am always in the right place at the right time. Um, so what that, what that requires, again, going back to the software update. So what, what, is, what needs to be renewed and renewed towards what okay and this is where the renewal comes is 80 to 90 percent of the thoughts you have today were the same thoughts you had yesterday and the day before so what happens is we get stuck in the patterns and habits that trap us in our limiting beliefs with fear-based decision making so what what we're doing here with, especially with the 10 truths is we're trying to change the thoughts that we had yesterday and the day before and last year and however many years back, even back to the point when we were a kid where our parents said, you know, you're never going to be amount to anything and, or, um, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. You can't expect to, to have enough money. I mean, all of those beliefs you know, we think about and they circulate and they're the same thoughts that we have. So literally what we're doing is, again, we're becoming a new creation and we're becoming that butterfly. But we have to realize that those 80 to 90 percent thoughts, we need to capture those and replace them with a different thought. So software update and the software that we're downloading is Romans 12.2, right? Rome, uh, version 12.2 in our uh, in our computer uh, computer update. So the first upgrade, <clears throat> excuse me, that that we need to make is, and we do a control alt delete on this one. Uh, religion's influence on how I view me and others. So. Uh, so Linda, as, as you and I have discovered, um, religion can be very toxic. Would there be anything you would want to share about maybe how your views have changed on, on this one and maybe how you've started to renew your mind based on religion? Um, <clears throat> well, I've really started to um, realize that um, that my thoughts really become, you know, my reality. Mm -hmm. And so I really have to stop and think about what I'm thinking, you know, or just, you know, silence the old patterns and beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is, is when you're talking about updating a your software is you have to put in new thoughts and those right. new thoughts are like the 10 truths you have to like memorize them or maybe just write them down and the other day I was just writing down I am um mantras mm -hmm. I am statements like um 
um, everything that I haven't been. I changed my thoughts by writing, I am thankful, I am thoughtful, and I am seeing and learning um, new things in new ways. And so I just kind of repeat those. And I, I think that helps is that you have to have new, a new program. And so the new program helps when you are writing things down and uh, thinking about what you're thinking and replace it with a new and better thought. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that is the way to do it. <clears throat> Repetitiveness even though sometimes it may not feel like those are true for you, but as you continue to think about them and then see them as they develop in your life and you keep the attitude of gratitude and maybe even keeping the, the journal, right? We talk about the 21 days of gratitude and you're counting your blessings every day. And then all of a sudden you see just how blessed you are. You're mm -hmm. writing down 10 of them every single day. And you get to see firsthand experience just how amazing life is or can be. And then those I am statements start to reveal and show themselves to you. This is true. And then your knowing grows. And then all of a sudden you're on that plane and you're not even thinking about it. It's just, it just happens. Yeah, that's where... I, you know, the butterfly effect yeah. where you're yeah. being renewed every day and it's transforming before you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, in regards to religion for me personally, I was under the religious bondage where I had to do all these things. I had to go to church. I had to tithe. I had to, you know, read my Bible. I had to pray. I had to confess my sins and, um, you know, even the judgment of, of myself and, and other people, and just thinking that's how God thought of me. And unless I did all the right things, he wouldn't bless me. So that was a huge change for me and an upgrade that I needed to make. And in fact, I needed to control, delete the, those beliefs because uh, they did not represent who God truly is and who I truly am. So that's a software upgrade. Uh, the next one is how I view myself. So because of religion and the thought process, I'm just a dirty, rotten sinner saved by grace. The, you know, I'm of Adam and there's nothing I can do about it. And it's not until I die that, hey, things are going to change. Um, so that's the way I viewed myself. But it turns out that that's not the way God sees me. And that was a huge change for me. And um, I've been able to renew my mind with that new understanding. So again, the old Doug, the belief that all of that religion and, and I'm not good enough, I'll never be good enough, uh, needed to be upgraded. Yeah, and I, I, I really, you know, how I used to think that way too and now mm -hmm. I'm more like okay now I accept myself for the way I am yes and I am loved and perfect in yeah. his eyes and you know there there is no fear I mean he tells me I'm not to fear um and so just renewing my mind just saying those things how I viewed myself before now I try to view myself through his lens mm -hmm. um Beautifully said. That's that's awesome. So, and there, there you go, right there. So now the software update is instead of control alt delete those programs, now I need to click here to download. Right. So the upgrade number three is on how God views me. And so Linda, how how do you feel God views you now? Um, now I just, um, uh, look at myself that, Hey, I'm forgiven and I'm loved and I need to walk in my birthright and claim who I really am. And so this has been the transformation for me is to 
you know, think that I am worthy, mm -hmm. that I am perfect and that I'm loved. And, you know, he sees me as his perfect child, his righteous child. And that um, as Jesus is, so am I. So. Yes, love that. Yeah. Yeah. And what the difference is for me is I always heard those words but felt that I needed to muster up some sort of faith or belief in that. Um, but all those words you just said, those aren't things that you made up or would like to be. That's actually who you are. And this is God's, God's view of you. This is, and I'm putting my hands out, like I'm putting, you know, laying my hands on, on this and and you and myself is this is God's proclamation over us and just like Jesus at when he was baptized this is my beloved son and who I'm well pleased there was nothing that Jesus did he didn't even start his ministry yet God said that this was his beloved son and he was pleased with him and and he didn't do anything so that's where we are and we're hearing that voice and then because of that voice, it then gives us the power to then live and live an, an amazing, abundant uh, uh, life that um, just like Jesus did, walked on water and, and did those things because he had the knowing and the power uh, from his, his the, the voice from the Father and the way he viewed, with the way God views uh, himself, ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. all right so um and and actually we'll talk about that here uh how did jesus demonstrate this power of the mind first off he loved right that's always the first and foremost thing is when we truly understand god's view of of ourselves and and the way the way he views us is the first response is love right so mm -hmm. that's where Jesus demonstrated the power of, of the thoughts is that he was able to love unconditionally. Uh, he was able to control the will of the flesh. Again, the example of not my will be done, but yours. When he was tempted in the wilderness, the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the negative thinking. Um, and, and I know religion likes to say it's Satan, right? There was something external that came and tempted Jesus. No, it was Jesus's thoughts. He had these thoughts, but he was able to say, no, I know my identity, like turning the stones into bread, <clears throat> which basically the temptation was for Jesus to do something with his own hand because he was hungry and create something that he know he could, he knew he could, but he chose not to do it because that wasn't what the will of the father was at that time so he basically said no i'm not going to do that and i know my identity in fact i am the bread of life i don't need to turn stones to make me bread because i am the bread of life so he was able to do that through his the power of the mind and knowing his true identity and again we talked about the the knowing um he knew he was loved he had, uh, so this is demonstrating his power, power over nat uh, nature, where he calmed the sea and he cursed the tree, power over disease, where he healed, uh, you know, healed the blind and healed the sick. He turned water into wine. Now, the crazy thing is you might be thinking, uh, thinking I'm talking about Jesus, but I'm talking about you. These are all the things that we can demonstrate when we have renewed our mind to what the possibilities are. Now, I'm not saying <clears throat> that you can calm the sea, curse a tree, heal the blind, or heal the sick. But what I am saying is that when we have the mind of Christ, that we can hear the voice of God. And he, if he, if we see the breadcrumb trail, if we see the path light up where the opportunity is to do a miracle, then that miracle will happen. So we're not duplicating the miracles of Jesus. What we're doing is we're duplicating the power that Jesus had 
from his mind and his knowing of who his identity was that whatever the father asked him to do, he would be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the father said, hey, go heal that blind guy. Oh, okay, what should I do? Well, why don't you spit on the ground and why don't you put the mud on his eyes and then he'll be healed. Oh, okay, no problem. So mm -hmm. notice his will to do something very weird, yet did it anyways. There's going to be times where, where spirit, where God is going to guide us into doing some things that may be like, really, I need to call that person or I need to go over there and do this. And the answer is, yes, that's what I'm asking you to do. And each time we do that and we see miracles or we see answers to prayer or we see a line that opens up or an app, uh, an appointment that opens up, our knowing grows. And then now the next thing that we're told to do, we'll be able to do it. But we have to make sure that our will says, I'm a, that's too weird. I'm not going to do that. Even though the prompting, even though the direction, even though the breadcrumb trail is lighting up that says, this is what I want you to do. I can't do that. That's crazy. We need to switch that, turn that around and say, okay, I know that's weird, but I feel feel you want me to be doing this and I'm going to do it even though it's awkward, even though I don't feel comfortable doing it. And then all of a sudden, boom, wow, I can't believe that. That's amazing. How did that work out? I think I'm, I'm, I'm following you. And I, the mantra that really comes to me or the, the word is that I've been listening to every day is all things are possible. There you go. Yes. Yes right all things are possible but remember it's not you doing it saying i'm gonna make this happen it's in the state of being neutral and i really like the word you used earlier it's being neutral it's being available it's being hmm i wonder what's going to happen today i'm mm -hmm. i'm excited i i know it's going to light up for me and i'll be ready mm -hmm. and then you wait for that breadcrumb trail to light up Mm -hmm. so yes so back to my point is again i'm not saying that you're going to curse a tree or heal the blind that is possible for you for us but that might not be what spirit is guiding us to do so we just need to be available and listen and hear and we will see miracles All right, so I we're kind of here. So deep dive into the mind of Christ. So how how he thought about God, how he thought about himself, how he thought about others, um, and these are actually questions. But I'm not sure if we have time to go through all of these. There's there's a lot here, but as we think about the the mind of Christ, we have to ask ourselves these questions you know how did or how does a mind having the mind of christ think about god um and and how did jesus think about himself or others yeah. and you know what were his thoughts about money um you know just how he thought what 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 do you think in fact maybe we'll just rather than going to individual ones but how do you think, where do you think his thoughts went on any given day? How, how would you answer that? Well, I think his, his thoughts were always love and goodness yeah. and yeah. kindness. And yeah. so, and, and that's where a lot of us fail is we're still sometimes thinking uh, our old patterns, our old beliefs. And so, um, fear-based or any of those are not of God. And so that's where you have to examine yourself and say, okay, I'm not thinking with the mind of Christ. Um, yes. it's God is love. God is favor. God is prosperous. God is abundant. And as he is, so am I. So then I have to ask myself, am I thinking in fear? Am I thinking in mm -hmm. lack? Yes. And so I need to change my 
thoughts or change my vibration to tune into the way that God is sees and thinks. And so it's, that's the transformation is, you know, renewing my mind like he thinks. Absolutely. So. Yeah. I love that. Love that. And, you know, talking about how he thought about others or religion or the lowly and downcast, the sick, when we approach that from a love base, there, there was, there was no, there was no judgment, you know, and I think of the woman caught in adultery, right? Mm -hmm. It's if religion was there, um, as they were hey, stone this lady and Jesus had compassion and love and, and basically said, no, I don't see any wrong in you. Um, I see fear, um, not only in you, but for the people around you, but I'm not fearful. I'm love and I'm giving you, I'm extending that love to you. And then it transformed her life because uh, she saw herself differently. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. But how do we do this? So now we get into kind of where the rubber meets the road. Um, it's my belief that gratitude um, is is one of the keys. That's why I always start with uh, with with gratitude on on that wheel that I've shown before, and the twenty one days of gratitude to be consciously aware with the intention to see and find things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. That's how. That's where the software upgrade and the habits that we develop uh, it starts with gratitude. And then identity, remembering who and whose you are and that you're already whole, right? There's there's nothing that we can do that would change that. So we're living, living out of or from being whole already. And then the 10 truths. And then renewing our minds. So... Um, now, the 21 days of gratitude, I, I'm not sure if I've expressed this before, but um, it does take 63 days for us to make it a habit. So for the software upgrade, if you do 21 days of gratitude, that first 21 days is, is it forms it. And then the next 21 days, it's you set it. And then the 21 days, you forget it. Um, so it's actually 63 days and maybe I haven't expressed that in the past, but definitely don't stop after 21 days and say, all right, I've got this down and, and now I'm good. In fact, it, it, for me, it's been a lifelong habit where I do it all the time. So, um, it's that important to, uh, to keep the renewing of our mind going and then meditation. Uh, it's about relationship where you are sitting quietly in a contemplative state allowing the thoughts to whiz by but just getting familiar with with being quiet and being still and being able to hear that 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 voice that that sh shares you know just how amazing you are and your true identity and meditation takes us there it gets us into the habit of uh and and the memory of just being quiet and it's amazing when you do that throughout the day, your day is quieter. And uh, uh, I find easier because of that. And then the I am statements. And you mentioned this uh, uh, this earlier, which was perfect. You know, reprogramming your subconscious mind. You know, the 60 to 70,000 thoughts that you have um, are 90% of what, uh, what you thought yesterday and the day before. And just renewing that, coming up with a new I am statement is like, whoa, yeah. And then meditating upon that. What what do, what would that look like if I truly believed that statement? Um, so that's building the habit of, of agreeing with those I am statements. And then uh, uh, the 10 blessings, right? That goes to the 21 days of, uh, of gratitude. Mm -hmm. All right. And that is it. So... Linda, thanks for uh, thanks for jumping on. Any last uh, comments or questions? 
Um, I think, you know, in order to re become a new identity is, is um, the identity part is, is when you start um, meditating or when you start um, saying the I am statements and you start um, appreciating, then your identity does change. Okay. And um, that's where I feel like I'm at is that, you know, be staying in that um, just it's like school. <laughs> you're relearning and mm. you're, you know, and that's how you change your identity. And a lot of times I think our identity, we get involved in what we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, the doership of 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 who we are. But um, I think when you're trying to reprogram your mind and becoming a new person, uh, a new creature in Christ, you know, old things have passed away. You, It's with this 21 days of, of being grateful, this 21 days of, of reprogramming with I am statements and counting your blessings and just resting mm -hmm. your identity changes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. One, one thought at a time. Mm -hmm. And just like one of those first slides, it talked about the, you know, what seeds are you planting? Mm -hmm. uh, they could turn into trees or you, they can turn into weeds. And uh, everything that is on this slide right here are the seeds of wholeness and wellness and peace and joy and love. Um, so those are the seeds that we're planting. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. All right. So again, thank you for joining us on the Sundays with Doug. Uh, thank you for coming alongside of us as we come alongside of you. As again, we are rewiring our brain and building these new habits and creating that new identity. Because it's not about who you were, but it's about who you are. You already are these things. And now it's just coming into agreement with that. And then when you're in agreement with that, your life will change. It'll transform. Um, and in some cases, without you even, you know, or knowing it or seeing it, it just all of a sudden, it's like, wow, I've got this peace that I haven't had before. And, and I'm loving on this person that normally I wouldn't. And all of a sudden, it just starts to reveal. And, and uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, that's it for this morning. So uh, again, thank you for jumping on and uh, we will see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.